This is Unexpected with Hannah Love. In this podcast, you will gain a new perspective of how God loves you enough to call you to things that you couldn't have imagined for yourself. Hi guys. Yes, it's me. Um, I lost my voice. Totally fine. My voice is just not. So bear with me this week, but welcome back. And if you have made it this far, congratulations. We are halfway through the life of David. Roughly 15 years after David first came onto the scene in the Bible, remember he was anointed as a teenager, he finally entered into the season of appointing. But let's not forget all the in-between. Notice this was years and years in the making. Notice there were years of being hidden. There were years of preparation. And of course, there were years of running. That is most often the case for each of us as well. There's a call on our lives and an anointing from a young age. But it takes years, maybe even decades, to finally see it. Call me an optimist, but I find hope in that. Just knowing that the trials are preparation, knowing that the time was never wasted, but in fact, that time was honing your skills and developing your strengths. This is where we find David. If you'll remember where we left off, King Saul was dead, and there was, unsurprisingly, a bit of conflict after his death. After all, he had an entire line of sons to secede him, and they didn't go without a fight. During this time, seven years to be exact, David ruled over the kingdom of Judah, which was the southern half of the nation, while Saul's house was wrestling internally for kingship in the northern kingdom. Eventually, Ishbosheth, one of Saul's sons, was murdered. This is when David finally became king over all of Israel. David didn't murder him, by the way. (laughs) He was murdered from one of his own corrupt raiding bands. So anyway, this event launched David into his place as king over the entire nation, finally uniting the two kingdoms after years of civil war. I'll begin reading in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 1 through 16. Then all the tribes of Israel went to David at Hebron and told him, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, when Saul was our king, you were the only one who really led the forces of Israel. And the Lord told you, you will be the shepherd of my people Israel. You will be Israel's leader. So there at Hebron, King David made a covenant before the Lord with all the elders of Israel, and they anointed him king of Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 40 years in all. He had reigned over Judah from Hebron for seven years and six months. And from Jerusalem, he had reigned over all Israel and Judah for 33 years. David then led his men to Jerusalem to fight against the Jebusites, the original inhabitants of the land who were living there. The Jebusites taunted David, saying, You'll never get in here. Even the blind and lame could keep you out. For the Jebusites thought they were safe. But David captured the fortress of Zion, which is now called the city of David. On the day of the attack, David said to his troops, I hate those lame and blind Jebusites. Whoever attacks them should strike by going into the city through the water tunnel. So David made the fortress his home, and he called it the city of David. He extended the city, starting at the supporting terrace and working inward. And David became more and more powerful because the Lord God of heaven's armies was with him. Then King Hiram of Tyre sent messengers to David, along with cedar timbers and carpenters and stonemasons, and they built David a palace. And David realized that the Lord had confirmed him as king over Israel and had blessed his kingdom for the sake of his people Israel. After moving from Hebron to Jerusalem, David married more concubines and wives, and they had more sons and daughters. I'll pause here to remind everyone that this is still the Old Testament, and kings typically had a lot of wives and children to preserve the line. That aside though, David has finally done it. He is formally appointed as king over all of Israel. (laughs) 
Hey guys, I just wanted to take a minute to tell you that holidays are coming and I have a gift idea for you. I love gifting people the Bible. It's the greatest gift anyone can give or receive. It's the Word of God. And I don't mean any Bible. I'm talking about the Journal the Word Bible. I love this Bible. It has margin to make your own notes, to jot down your own revelations that God has given to you. Not only that, but there are virgins that have prompts for journaling for women, for girls, for teens. They have virgins for men, and they even have large print for those of you who may have family members like myself that don't have the best vision. They have something for everyone, seriously, and the covers are all beautiful. There is a pattern, there is a color for everyone, and it's a beautiful, timeless gift. If you want to stock up on some good Christmas gifts today, then go check them out at your local Christian bookstore or journaltheword.com. And now, back to our show. Fifteen years after the days that God sent Samuel the prophet to anoint him. What a wild ride. Seriously, I know I skipped over a lot of his life on the run, but you should take time to go back and read some of his exploits. David is only 30, and it seems like he has lived a thousand lives already. And it's just beginning. Does that feel like your own story? Like you've experienced years in the valleys of life? lifting up your eyes into the hills, knowing God has called you there. And one day, after years of struggle and obedience and battling, you're arriving. You've arrived to the thing. It's really happening. A new chapter of life is ahead of you, and the years behind seem like a different lifetime. It's scary and exciting at the same time. But how many of you know that saying? With new levels come new devils. It's true. Again, it all goes back to that principle, to whom much is given, much is required. And I love that David acknowledges this. Verse 12 says, And David realized that the Lord had confirmed him as king over Israel and had blessed his kingdom for the sake of his people Israel. This is a key takeaway about David. He saw God in it. This is what made him special. He always turned his eyes back to God. He saw God do what he said he would do in his life. He made him king. He blessed David. But David also saw why God did it. For the sake of his people, Israel. It wasn't for David's vanity. It wasn't because of his accomplishments or his qualifications. It was because of his heart posture. God chose the youngest son of a farmer. He was little more than a teenager in the tiny town of Bethlehem. But... This boy had a heart for God. It is why he was chosen. And it is also that heart that made him continually act in obedience. He honored God in all that he did. Remaining in this heart posture, David knew God didn't do it just to elevate a young man from a shepherd to a king. God did this for the sake of his people, Israel. And there's my favorite takeaway today. God chooses the unexpected because he sees the heart and he knows the motive. God calls, anoints, prepares, and appoints those who will honor his will, because ultimately God's will is for the good of all of his children. And he can use us to accomplish whatever that is. If we are obedient, if we remain in him, I find it remarkable that after all those years, David amassed fame and victories and power And instead of being filled with self-pride or ego, he sees God in it. And he sees the bigger picture for it. Not just for him, but for Israel. What a testimony to that heart of his. Every night, I pray over our own boys that they have hearts like David's. Hearts after God's own. And that is my prayer for each of you today. That you will have hearts like David that despite the waiting and the preparation, the running and the fighting, you'll see God in it. Not only will you see Him in it, but you'll see why God did it. He did it so you can rule and reign and change the lives of others for God's glory. I love y'all, 
and I hope that you will catch us back here next week to hear all about the next season in David's life. It's not pretty, but most of us have had our own season of it. It's a fall from grace. And ultimately, his life ends in redemption. It's going to be good. Thank you so much for listening today. If this episode has encouraged you, please feel free to share this show with your family and friends. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world today, and my hope is that this show is a candle in the dark.